JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for uh, May the 4th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire, if, uh, to acquire any financial instrument or product. I uh, will leave you a few seconds uh, to read uh, the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but two of the other major currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian session Wednesday, losing ground only versus uh, the Canadian dollar and the euro. The greenback won the most versus uh, the British pound and the New Zealand dollar, while it eked out the least gains against the Japanese yen. Now, although the performance in the FX world does not paint uh, a crystal clear picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we would assume that the weakening of the US and Kiwi combined with the relative strength of the US dollar and the Japanese yen, mean uh, a risk of uh, trading activity. Turning our gaze to the equity world though, we see that major European indices traded in the green with a positive appetite rolling into the US session, albeit softer. Nonetheless, today in Asia, both Hong Kong's Hang Seng and South Korea's KOSPI traded in the red. Japan's Nikkei and China's Shanghai Composite stay closed due to holidays. Now, the reason why investors may have decided to reduce their risk exposure during the Asian trading may have been the looming FOMC decision scheduled for later uh, today. The financial community is widely anticipating a 50 basis points rate hike and thus if this is the case, the attention is likely to quickly turn to the accompanying statement in the press conference by Fed Chair Powell for new information about the future rate path. <laughs> so this is one of the times that even if we get a, uh, a rate hike, a double rate hike, a 50 basis points rate hike, uh, the dollar, the aftermath market reaction may not depend on that because it's fully priced in. Recent hoggish remarks by several uh, Fed officials, including Powell, have prompted investors to fully price in that uh, hike, as well as a triple one in June. Thus, if, uh, the even uh, market participants even anticipate another 50 basis points to be added in July, with a 12% chance of a back-to-back -back, uh, triple hike. So, uh, we are expecting a 50 basis points hike now. 75 basis points hike in June and another 50 basis points in July with a 12% uh, chance for the July hike to be of uh, 75 uh, basis points. So that's over like hoggish and thus the meeting statement and the press conference have to match those expectations for the US dollar to spike higher. So even if we get a 50 basis points uh, hike if the statement, uh, the accompanying statement and the press conference by Fed Chair Powell do not add fuel to those expectations, the US dollar is unlikely to spike higher. Anything suggesting that the financial community is too aggressive may even result in a decent setback in the US dollar. Having said all that though, even if this is the case, even if we get a setback in the US dollar, as long as the Fed is expected to continue tightening at a faster pace than other major central banks, the greenback is very likely to rebound again in the foreseeable future and continue its uh, prevailing uptrend. Now, as for the stocks, uh, hawkish Fed could prove negative. Why? Because uh, higher interest rates mean higher borrowing costs for companies as well as lower present values for uh, high growth firms which are um, valued based on discounted uh, future cash flows while in case the Fed is not as aggressive as the market is pricing in equities could rebound somewhat 
overall though with the fed expected to um, if the fed if uh, expectations remain uh, aggressive with regards to the fed uh, wall street could see another uh, leg south in the foreseeable future but everything will depend on uh, at least with the immediate short-term reaction will depend on today's outcome now as for the rest of today's events as uh, uh, for the rest of today's events from the eurozone we get the final services and composite pmis for april as well as the retail sales for march from the US, besides the FOMC decision, we have the ADP employment report for April, the services and composite um, market uh, PMIs, the final ones uh, for the same month, as well as the ISM non manufacturing index uh, for April. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week March earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding, which I'm holding every Monday at seven at seven o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye. Have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.